And our words and language have a particular way of ordering things. So, for example, we have nouns that are uh, the things, um, but we also have the predicates, which are the things that we're attributing to the nouns. So, for example, if I were talking about horses, I would say, for example, that all horses are animals. That's true. Yes. In fact, here's my first quiz question, if that's all right. Give me a true sentence. That could be valid. Interesting question. A lot of people use the word valid to mean what we would also call true, as synonymous. Uh, in logic, however, we use valid with refer to, uh, referring to arguments, and truth we refer to statements. So statements are true or false. Arguments are valid or invalid. And what makes an argument valid is its form, right? But we'll get into that. So, so the quiz question is, give me a true statement. That could be really quite easy, especially since I'm going to give you the four possible forms you can use. And this is from Aristotle. Um, my mouse can move. There we go. So I'll go to the um, uh, traditional square. Opposition. And you could go to the Stanford Encyclopedia. There would be lots of uh, different uh, ways of looking at this. This is how logic works, and it's still taught today. Uh, so this is something that Aristotle invented, and yet it's still a part of uh, what everybody uh, should learn in college or even earlier, right? Um, so, Aristotle uh, discovers in his analysis, he, he doesn't just analyze the parts of animals and the way animals move and the way uh, governments work and so on and so forth. He argues the way language works. And when we say something is true and we're looking for how knowledge works, knowledge is the uh, knowledge of what? of all the true statements. By the way, it's also the knowledge of all the statements that you know are false, knowing that they are false, right? That's an important part of this. That actually comes from Empedocles, who argues that knowledge includes not only the knowledge of what is, but also what is not, right? Uh, so when I know that this is a table, I also know it's not a chair, right? You, know, you shouldn't sit on that. Right? It's not made for that, et cetera, right? Um, but in his analysis of the way statements work, that could be true or false, what he discovers is that there are four statement types. And we refer to them as A statements, E statements, I statements, and O statements. By the way, that comes from, uh, if, you, if you draw the square the way it is here, going to use the primitive board uh, instead. But if you look at this, notice that the A and the I are on the left <coughs> side where they are affirmative statements. And these are abbreviations really from the word affirmo, which means to affirm. Or there are, you know, the, you know, it's, it is the case, right? So affirmo gives us A and I, it's A-F-F-I-R-M-O, right? I affirm, right? These two come from the word nego, which means I deny, right? So E and O, N-E-G-O, right? So that's the code where that comes from. Um, that's obviously Latin, so that's obviously not something that Aristotle but if we look at this, notice that 
we have the universals on the top. Universals because they refer to all the members of the subject set, right? All the members. So every S subject is predicate, right? So whatever, whatever you put in the predicate slot. So for example, horses or animals, I'm saying horses are the subject, and being animals is the predicate, right? So you could say all horses are animals, that's an A type statement. It's a universal affirmative, right? On the other hand, if I were to say no horses are animals, by the way, that's false, right? We know the definition of horses, so we notice this is a true statement, right? And if I said no horses are animals, we would know that that's false, right? But that would be a type E statement, where I'm saying that None of the subject set are included 